So what are we talking about today? Today we're gonna to talk about the Exoset. And, and one of the adventures that I took it on. Project Exoset. Yeah, we probably haven't heard th those words in a while. <laughs> should, we, should we actually like talk about what's going on with that right now? Like with that car? No, let's focus on, okay. All right. let's focus on the main su uh, subject here. We can, we can wrap it up a little bit at the end of the video yep. and talk about more where it's in its current state. So those of you who've been following Project Exoset, we, I know that we've kind of dropped the ball on releasing some content, but it, it's running. Mm -hmm. Today we're here to talk about its first outing out on track, yep. piloted by Matthew at Lime Rock's Big Track. Yeah, yeah, we took it out on the Big Track. Uh, I did a mass tuning event, which, you know, I'm not paid by mass tuning by any way, by any means, but go check out mass tuning. Their events are the best. Um, you know, if you talk about them like this, we're going to make them pay us. <laughs> Come on, Armin. <laughs> um, yeah, I took it out. Uh, it was... Um, it was fresh, like it was a fresh build. Like we, I had driven it a lot in the street. Um, I had take a, taken a look at the tuning. The tuning was actually really good. The, the Hydronemesis ECU that came with the car, um, it worked really well. I think it had a lot of like auto correction um, in the ECU and, and you know, it was the same engine that it was running, that it was, you know, professionally tuned on before. So I think it was like similar enough so that the tune was healthy. Um, I did have some issues on track um, when I would be under like, high load for long periods of time it would start breaking up which i you know after that i found out that uh it was actually a ruptured fuel line like the one the one rubber hose connected to the fuel pump had actually ruptured and it wasn't getting proper fuel pressure sounds so, like a hack job and stuff yeah. <laughs> when, i forgot like no, oh I, I bought a i bought an oem fuel pump like yeah. assembly and and put it in and, and it was just that that rubber line that connects the the hard line to the the fuel pump had actually ruptured and i was losing fuel pressure at like sustained high rpm that's why it was fine on the street you know you could cruise around it eventually like broke completely and then i couldn't drive it on the street but in this video that we're going to show you it was it was in the process of breaking it was breaking like the the car was breaking up it was cracked yep so this was in full rally trim yep this is this is with the paco motorsports long travel rally suspension kit. Mm -hmm. We saw what this kit does well. Yeah. Where we kind of got a better grasp of where the kit stands for, um, you know, what its, what its intended purpose was for, and it didn't fully align with what we, we had intended to use the car for. It honestly could be a good dual purpose suspension setup. It did well on track. I mean, you'll, you'll see in the video, like it, it had a lot of movement, like the suspension had a lot of movement, but um, like, honestly, like it was still a fast car. I oh ran, yeah. yeah. It's, well, I, here's the thing, I don't want to, so I, I'm sorry yeah. if I came across yeah. like I'm talking bad. I think the Paco kit was really cool. Yeah. You know, the whole, the whole I, I love supermotos, which if those of you don't know what a supermoto is, it's a, it's a dirt bike that you basically remove the dirt tires and you put uh, 17 inch street, wheels and tires on it and but you have a very lightweight nimble yeah um long travel hooligan bike for the street so we kind of the, the idea for project exoset was to kind of follow that same concept so that's why we looked at the paco kit um and then this is when in full route so this is what you're gonna see here is full rally trim <laughs> yeah and it, it, it also has our our young blood um what they seven or 15 by seven yeah are they 15 by seven? 15 by seven, plus 25 plus with, the, with some uh, Toyo R888Rs. Yeah, tires on it. Yeah. Um, so grippy boys. <laughs> grippy boys, and it, you know, this is literally without a full alignment on it. We just met, aligned it the best yeah, we, that you we could. Yeah, we did like kind of a string alignment. My dad's got this little like laser yep. alignment system. We did the toe and we, we you know, I've got a, a decent camber gauge and everything. And But I guess the takeaway here is is for a car with no real true setup done. Like literally just is like, just testing to and making sure everything's okay. This thing's set a pretty good time without being able to, how much boost was this, five pounds? It, it, it was, I mean, you can't even really compare that because like I wasn't full throttle. The, oh, so Matthew wasn't even full throttle. When I'm, when I was on the straights, I, I had, if I go over full, like half throttle, it would start breaking up. So I was basically at like half throttle. I was revving it out because my air fuels were okay. I was monitoring that. But like I couldn't give it full throttle. I was basically just coasting through Lime Rock as fast as I could, and it, its best time was a 10404. Which, for for some um, reference, fast spec Miata cars back when I was racing spec Miata, like a minute two was considered pretty fast. 
yep. for Spec Miata line rock. I'm sure now I think Spec Miatas get down to the one minute range, um, but that's like favorable conditions, brand new tires, cool weather, um, and a SM, you know, cheater car. Yep. Like fast car, they say like if you can break a minute, you have a really fast car. You have a car. really fast car at Limark. That's basically like kind of rule of thumb. And I'll, and I'll just say like I, a Porsche Cayman S, I remember this because they did a Cayman S versus the Jag F type. So whenever the Jag F type came out, the Type R, mm -hmm. like it was the first year of the Jag F type, the supercharged one, a Porsche Cayman S at the hands of whoever from like Car and Driver and Motor Trainers, one of those magazines did a, did a 104 at Lime Rock. So Whoa. just to give context, like, that's pretty damn fast, especially never having Matthew never driving this car on. This was track the first before. time like performance oriented driving. Like I've driven on, I drove it on the street quite a bit because I wanted to make sure it was in good condition to drive on track. And like this was the first performance oriented driving I did with this car. And it, we'll, 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 I'm going to show Quinn right now. We're going to we're going to we're going to talk you through yeah. the lap. We're going to lay it on top of the, yep. us right now. Yep. So go ahead, Matthew. So this is coming down the hill. And I was just kind of hanging out in the high RPMs, but like, I literally did not floor it. Like, I, I can't even really tell right in here. Fifth gear. I mean, yep. you're getting over, you're probably reaching over 100 miles an hour here on the straight. I think I hit like 115 yep. total, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm not on throttle. I'm not as aggressive on throttle as I usually am. Fourth gear. Yep, fourth, it's, it's a, this is a five speed with a 4.3 um, differential. So it's kind of short gearing. It was mostly fourth gear. I think some one time I dropped into third around the left hander, and it was just too much. But you can see like the movement. Like yeah, you can see the movement right there, and that's with an H and R um, front sway bar. We had originally gone with the stock NV sway bar, but that was that would have been way too soft for the track. The Toyos just they, they grip so well that I wanted to I wanted a better bar on it before the track. Well, like look at like so right there, you you typically have to lift coming up the hill. Um, and, the, and the long travel, I mean, it, it looked like you kept contact patch and the car didn't even like, it didn't even phase the car. Yeah, it, it did get upset a couple of times. Um, I, I, you I know, mean, you're always going to have to get a lift yeah. a little bit, but the, the point is that that long travel like really just kind of like keeps the, yeah, the, you can the, see, the like, car in line. Of, like, yeah, I mean, it, honestly, like I think I could have gotten like a 102 if it, if the, it wasn't having a fueling issue. Oh, this car, this car. A full, a full song. Oh yeah, and we'll, we'll do, we'll do one yeah. in a minute. Oh yeah, with more boost too. Yeah. We were also this, the water temps were getting really high too. I, I don't think that just the coil rad is enough cooling for this thing on track. You're gonna have to duct everything. Yep, it's got to be ducted. It's gonna need hood vents. It's gonna need um, probably coolant reroute, um, which I have an order actually. <laughs> But I mean, overall, like the car, the car looks very well composed. Like you could see where the where the rear starts to move around a little bit, but it's it doesn't look scary. Yeah, that's one thing. Like the sh the short travel of my red car, my red Miata, which I also have driven on Lime Rock as well. Um, like it really upsets the rear end. Like the the compliance of the suspension really prevented it from doing any anything dramatic on track. So y there's a lot of advantages in having longer travel. Uh, and especially when you when you're dealing with uneven road surfaces and while cornering and while trying to put power down and one of the things that the Paco kit does really well is it manages all that and it's very compliant for a road going car yeah like that thing it was super comfortable on the road it just soaks up bumps yeah. so those look too good laps yeah. it looks clean they're clean laps yeah so we've we've changed i've changed the suspension since then Here's here's the here's the thing. It, you can't have something that does it all. Yeah. And when you put sticky tires on a car, it, there's going to be more weight transfer. There's just when you add more grip, there's going to be more weight transfer, and there's no way around it. So a rule of thumb is you just you really just want enough spring rate and a shock that can control that spring rate. It matches it th yeah. to match the tire compound that you're using. Because if you're too stiff, then there's no compliance. The car hops, and when I say hop, I don't mean like, I mean, in extreme cases, it's actually like, you know, really actually hopping, but when I say hopping, I'm just meaning that the, the, the tire compound is losing enough comp, a contact patch with the pavement while cornering over bumps that the car starts to um, slide, right? Essentially, you're making corrections at that point. So with the Paco kit, 
it has no problem soaking that those bumps up. Mm -hmm. It does that really well, but with the grippier tires in a in a racing environment on pavement, yep. there's a lot of weight transfer. And that weight transfer is ultimately gonna cost you time. Yeah, and you can tell too, like because of the amount of travel that the that the kit had, which is awesome on the street. Awesome. On on track, it's it's adding so much negative camber. I've got a photo of this thing coming right off the track with the with the Paco kit. And you can see there's like a, an inch. Of, of tire tread that wasn't even used. Like you see, it's a it's a completely different temperature, completely different color yeah. and texture tire because it just in full full uh, um, load on the suspension, it's, it's just got so much negative camber that it's just not even touching the outside edges of the tire. So, so I, I, we thought that there was adjustments in the shock on the on the kit that we we got. And I think they do have adjustments on some of the more expensive kits, just the one that we got didn't. Yeah, I think they're they're full blown like like new control arms and everything, like ex extended control arms and, and longer drive axles and right. like the, the big kit, the big more serious kits I think have that. In our heads we were like, okay, um, you know, we can run it softer for off like anything that's not pavement, gravel, dirt, yeah. grass, and then we can crank it up for when we do when we do full full pavement. Um, but we're, we were limited on the shock adjustment because you can't. Yeah, yeah, so it, was a, it was a little soft for the for the track. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you're looking for something, if you if you're trying to build a rally cross car, or something that, or just a rally car, right? Like anything that's not going to be fully on pavement, this is an awesome kit. Mm -hmm. It works really well. Um, and what they did was like the way that they set this up, and especially like with the arms in the rear to add all that that rear travel, like. It's cool. They get they did a great job for the intended purpose now, especially that Matthew's the sole owner of the car. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. Like we want to update everybody. Yeah. Oh yeah. I sold <laughs> so I sold my share of the Exo set to Matthew. Oh well, not, not me exactly. Well, Matthew and, and old and Mr. Weiser, yeah. Matthew's dad. Yeah. My dad and I are gonna you know we're we're building it into a track focused car basically now. Yeah. It, with which we'll, we'll you know it's still street legal and everything like that. We're still gonna like take it to cars and coffee and everything, but. On it, like I, I put my Zetas on it. With, uh, you know, if you're if you're unfamiliar with Zetas, they're like one of the best coilovers you can get for the Miata chassis. Um, and like they're they're great. They ride good for for a race coilover. But I, as soon as I drove it on the street, I'm like I, I missed the Paco kit. Yeah. <laughs> because the Paco kit just had so much compliance for all the rough parts of the road. It was just so much more street friendly. Yeah. And so, like and like all walks of life. Yeah, There's no free lunch. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You gotta pick and choose what you want to optimize and what you're willing to sacrifice for it. So for a more track oriented setup, the Zetas work well, but they're gonna give up that compliance. They're gonna give up that, I mean, you're losing travel. No, there's no way around it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the suspension being able to move more is gonna translate better on the street. Yep. And then let's give another shout out to, to Youngblood. Oh, and, yeah. and, their, I love and their, their wheels. spec yeah. wheels. I mean, they're, they're awesome wheels. They're really affordable guys. Definitely give them a, a check out. I, when I was racing, when I was active in Spec Miata, like I was always hunting for 15 by seven wheels. Mm -hmm. And you know, Youngblood just like they looked at what what the formula is, what the rule, what the rules allow, and they optimized that. They got the weight spot on. They got the offset spot on. Yep. Like everything about those wheels is is perfect, and they're so affordable for for a butt for a racing wheel, and they're nice looking. Oh yeah, I, real love nice the, wheel. I love the mesh wheel. Yeah, and even like, like you go bigger too. Like if it's not just for Spec Miata, Greg Peters uses Young Blood wheels yes. on his red car, and he's got like 15 by nines at like plus 35 and like 245s. Yep, and he made them fit under stock fender somehow. <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah, um, so that's that's it for Project Exo set. For, for now, just, it's kind of like an update and like... There's gonna be more content coming with it. I told Matthew, just because I'm selling you my share doesn't mean that you could just take <laughs> oh, that thing and run. No, no, I'm not taking it and run it. I'm taking it and I'm building it to be driven on track. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we'll, we'll have it up on Lime Rock and we'll, we'll, we'll get a lap time and I'm sure it's gonna set the record lap because the thing is pretty fast. And That's what I want it to be. I want it to be like an FTD. Yeah, and cake. we just dynoed it the other day. So that video is coming soon. Yep. Um, but yeah, is there anything else we gotta talk about for... About that one, no. No, I think that's it for the for the track video. Yeah. And I guess if like if those of you who didn't watch our live that we filmed not too long ago, the reason why I sold Matthew my FD and then my also my share of the Exoset is be seconds. <laughs> is because I, I have an order coming for a 2024 Toyota GR Supra with a manual transmission. You forgot about one special thing about that Supra. 
It's a 45th anniversary. I didn't ask for a 45th anniversary. You're gonna see it on Bring a Trailer like four days after he gets it. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm actually not doing that. The, 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 the funny but sucky thing is, is that all the things that make it a 45th anniversary are getting ripped off the car because <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> you gotta see the spoiler in person. We'll see. Uh, the, the calipers are better because they're black. It has, uh, that's the best part about yeah. it. It has black calipers instead yeah. of red, but the wheels are going. The wing is up for debate. It's probably going. The wheels are going. What's going on in the wheels? Oh no, that's for that's for oh, the, the build. Background, that's for the build. I don't know if they're in the in the video here, but if you've been following my Instagram, I tease them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's a graphic on the side that's like unique to the car. I think that thing's getting heat gun. <laughs> it's gonna come so, off with the plastics that on the that protect the car. <laughs> we'll have a pretty interesting build series for that. It's it's gonna be bastardizing the the 45th anniversary manual GR Supra. But I'm excited for the car, and we'll have a lot of content for that. And Exoset, it's not gone. There's gonna be a lot of content for it's, that as well. Yeah, it's not done. It's it's being refined right now. I had to do a lot of like stuff to make my my red car survive on track yeah for long periods of time and well when it's dedicated when you start doing dedicated track stuff it's a whole nother ball game yep. so you have a lot more sorting to do i mean you're throwing you you're just, it's just different sorting you're getting rid of comfort and everything else but you're focusing on the track reliability and performance and cooling and, and yep yep so so it's getting there um and now I got, my dad's gonna help me out with that too he's got a he's got a very precise way of doing things he's very very focused on thing on like how everything is and make sure making sure everything's perfect we're actually swapping out we're, we're doing all like auto meter gauges and everything he's building oh, a boy. dashboard oh, for it oh boy here he's we go he's building like a nice dashboard for this it this is the, gonna be the never-ending yep. exoset build we're gonna get rid of all the extra wiring he's gonna we're gonna do our own like like um power block well, with you all, better yeah. film some of this yeah, and show know, these guys no i will i will so they don't so they don't they see some of the the the, the progress on this yes me project Working on it with somebody else will make it easier because like when I built it, I built it basically in my garage and, and like it's very hard to film like anything but a time lapse and, and work on it and focus and actually get it done. Don't worry guys, I, I solemnly swear that every single modification for the Supra will be filmed and documented <laughs> as well as updated driving videos, although it's, we're getting late here so it, it may be, it was snowing this morning in oh Connecticut on uh, November 1st. Um, so if the things come in the end of this month, like it may be winter time, but we'll still modify it over the winter and film it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just might not get to take it out and drive it. That's right. If it's dry, I'll drive it. No, no wetness. All right. That's it for this one. That's it. Check out Paco Motorsports. Check out Young Blood Wheels. Yeah. And stay tuned for more coming on Project Exoset and soon to be Project GR Supra. Mm -hmm. And other ones. We got other ones. Other things in the mix. I swear, like it might... I think someone said this when we did our live the other day. They're like, is this channel dying? It's like, yeah, we're, 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 we had a busy year. we got life stuff. You know, I've got an extra life, like life form that I need to Matt, take you care literally of had an extra life. That's number three for him. <laughs> yeah. So you can imagine how busy he is. And yeah. you guys know my deal and yeah, the, yeah, business Quinn's and work and it's, it's tough, but we're not, we're not letting go of the channel. We're nope. still going to produce content. We're still going to keep on trucking along and um, I'm excited to, well, I've been excited diving back into the cars, especially with Project RX-7. Yeah, oh my god, I know. Which we have a dyno video coming for that soon. Yeah, I have, a, I have FD stuff coming too. Hell yeah. Yep. So the FD is not here. It's at his house. Oh, it's at Derek's. Yeah. Yeah. TDO performance. Derek, getting it done. <laughs> all right, guys, we won't talk anymore. Yep. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you all in the next one. Oh, my leg's asleep. Good night. Done. <laughs>